Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. Hey, welcome back to the show. I am going to use today's episode for a quick little update on an upcoming tax deadline. Now, if you didn't know there was a tax deadline creeping around the corner, welcome. (laughs) Welcome to the show. But here's the thing. We're going to talk a little bit about the tax deadlines. I know you don't hear me talk about taxes a lot lately on the show, and that's somewhat intentional. So I'm fully aware that we don't talk about taxes as much as we used to, mostly because that's not the highlight of what we do. It's kind of a side dish. We're going to get into that in some future episodes, by the way, is in terms of what business finance really looks like and the ta- the role taxes play in it. I'm really excited for these episodes. Anyway, so tax deadline's coming up and September 15th is that deadline. A couple of things that are happening on that deadline, just a quick update. Number one is if you have a business tax return, aka you have a business that is a multi-member LLC, partnership or an S corporation, then if you did not file your taxes yet for 2023 and you filed an extension, that extension is good for six months. It bumps the deadline six months, but from March 15th to September 15th, a lot of people associate the tax extension deadline to October 15th, but that's for the individual's and the C corporations. So if you're used to hearing April 15th, October 15th, just understand that if you have a business tax return, all that's a month earlier for that particular return. And you need the K-1 from your business return in order to do your personal. So if you filed your personal, but you didn't file your business yet, you might have to amend that because the proper order is to file all the businesses first, which is why the deadlines are sooner. They kind of design it that way. So just so you know, there is a deadline for the extension deadline. No, before you ask, you cannot get another extension. You can't just be stacking extensions. You get one extension for six months. And that extension is to file the paperwork. It's not to pay the taxes. So if you owe taxes on anything that is due either September or October 15th, just understand that you've been accruing interest for the last six months that the payments were due at the filing deadline for the most part. So just pay attention to those deadlines that are coming up between September and October. Now, the other thing that's due September 15th are quarter three estimates for my business taxpayers out there. Now, these estimates are personal tax payments. I'm going to remind you again, these are personal tax payments that you're paying as sort of a pay-as-you-go type of thing on in deposits throughout the year that are going toward your tax bill based on the profits you're making in your business. So the IRS had this idea a long time ago because people weren't really making right on paying their taxes at the end of the year only when they had W-2 jobs and they had, you know, regular income coming in. They would always have to pay their taxes at the end of the year. And the IRS was like, nobody is saving up their money. Nobody has enough money to pay the bill. And enough is enough. We're going to just start taking it out of their paychecks. We're going to call it withholdings. And you might be used to this from your summer jobs, from your W-2 work, that they would take out that money automatically, right out the gate. So they were just taking it. They were basically garnishing your paycheck with taxes because they were like, we don't trust you to do it, so we're going to do it for you. Now, the exception to that is for my business owners out there, if you're making money on a LLC or sole proprietorship, or even S-corporation, partnership. These things are called pass-through entities. And what happens is you make money based on how much you own of the company. You make money that the company makes in terms of profit. Now, even if you don't take that money out of the bank, it still counts towards profit. Your profit is conceptually revenue minus expenses. Now, where that cash actually went in terms of getting taken out by you to pay your rent or pay your bills or to spend, you know, a week in Vegas, who cares, right? It doesn't matter. It was still there and it's 
technically taxable. So without going on too much of a rant on how to actually figure out what you owe, just understand that there are these four payments that the IRS wants you to make that are like an installment plan throughout the year that you can pay. And they're typically due, not typically, they are due for individuals, April 15th, June 15th, September 15th, and January 15th. Don't try to do the math and figure out some type of rhythm to that. There is none. I personally hate the fact that April and June are stacked so close together. It's like, dude, we just got out of tax season. Now you're telling me I owe estimates and I owe them again in two months. What is this? Yeah, I don't like it. (laughs) I actually brought that up to the IRS when we had a chance to talk to them uh, on like a focus group. So doing my part, but I think it's silly. And it's really important that you pay attention to these deadlines. It doesn't mean that you must 100% of the time comply with all of these deadlines if you're running into cash flow problems or you just feel like your cash flow would be better spent and in reinvesting into your business and there's higher priority items out there, that is a okay by me. Okay. I am not the type of person who's going to tell you that taxes are a top priority. You should know that for your own business. And I would rather equip you with the tools to prioritize your financials, financials effectively than to tell you what they are or to tell you that paying the government is your number one priority. So, These are really important deadlines because these are your chances to chip in throughout the year and kind of pay based on a milestone system. Now, how much you owe is going to depend on what you got for these vouchers last year. So pay attention on your 2023 taxes. If you have filed them, you're going to get these vouchers that say how much you owe in estimates if you owed last year. So pay attention. Yeah. Pay attention to what you got from your accountant and read that package. Actually read the letter on the front package of your tax return if you got one it tells you a lot of information that's really useful. And I mention that because, I mean, there's always a few that don't read the letter <laughs> and then ask a question like, hey, when is my tax payment going to come out of my account? Or, hey, what are my estimates? All of it's detailed on the letter on the front of your tax return or maybe a cover letter or email that your accountant sent you last year. So double check that and then always feel free to check in with them. Now, keep in mind that when it comes to this time of year, that your accountant is insanely busy again because a lot of people, like not only are they really busy, let me just add this in, but all the people who are like delinquent throughout the year and don't turn any any of their documents and kind of ignore the accountant exists and doesn't respond to their emails, all of those people, which I know you're not one of them because you listen to the show, (laughs) all of those people are now showing up out of the woodwork and the accountant's stressed out. Because now all these people are showing up in September and they're like, okay, I hear all my documents, Mr. Accountant, Mrs. Accountant, go ahead and file all my work. And they're stressed, they're bogged down. So, you know, do an accountant a favor (laughs) in this extended tax season and come prepared, come empowered with knowledge from this show and ask the right questions if you can, because they're going to be Uh, more likely to help you out if you can really concentrate your questions on, hey, can you help me explain estimates to me? Or can you help me understand if I should pay any estimates for quarter three? You know, shoot them a quick note. Hit pause on this podcast and shoot them a quick note and ask them if you should be paying any Q3 estimates before the deadline. And maybe they'll respond back to you with a quick update or it might be very busy. So make sure you just let them know you're thinking of them (laughs) and appreciate their help. But yeah, we have a deadline coming up for the Q3 estimates and for S Corp and partnership extensions. And it's a busy time over the next month or so for us accountants, anyone who does taxes, who has extensions. Now, we don't have any extensions at our firm. We have actually a strict policy that we don't do any taxes after June. I personally love this policy. It's also much easier when you have like a dozen clients. So to be fair, you know, we're able to pull that off. But a lot of CPA firms are really busy this time of year. So Give them a little love. Make sure you know that uh, you appreciate them. Make sure to let them know. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let them know. If they're not getting back to you though, let us know. Shoot me a DM. Let me know if you have questions on the deadlines or you know, need help figuring out what to pay. Actually, we cover this in power sessions too. We can help people figure out you know, a way to better plan for their taxes if they're not getting that input from their accountant. We can even meet with them and the accountant to sit down and come up with a tax plan just to hold everybody accountable to actually getting that stuff done. So that's always a possibility when it comes to working with us in a power session. If you're interested in that, definitely reach out to me, let me know, and I'll see you on the next episode. 
Everyone says you need to get a bookkeeper, but what good is that if you don't know how to read the financial statements they give you? If you're hesitating to ask questions on your numbers or you're not even looking at them because you don't know how to turn them into actions, we're now offering an accessible option for you to get the support you need to use your financial statements effectively. It's called the CFO On Demand. You can bring your financials to a call with me or message me privately about what's going on with your business. We will even go over what documents you need to send your tax pro so you feel prepared and confident this tax season. Want to learn more? Head to thecfoondemand.com and the link is down in the show notes. Again, that's thecfoondemand.com. Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.